Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about exactly what you need to know about sample history, OPQRST, and getting history from the patient. Everything you need to know for EMT class, let's talk about it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here. Make sure to like and make sure you are subscribed to the Paramedic Coach Army and hit that notification bell. OPQRST, sample history, and everything to do with getting the history from the patient. This is so important when it comes to EMT class, make or break moment, let's talk about it. How do you get a history from a patient in the right way? Now, in your brain, when you come into EMT class, it's probably one of the first things that you've done. So what we need to do is we need to use our brain and think about it. Okay, instead of saying to the patient, hey, what's wrong? Like in a, a normal lay person would say, hey, what's wrong? What's going on? You okay? What's wrong with you? What's wrong is now going to be, in medical terms, the history of the present illness. Sounds crazy. Let me explain. What's wrong? What you're asking is, what's changed about you? Okay? So in the medical profession, we're asking history of present illness. So, Mr. or Mrs. Patient, right? What is the history of your present illness? History is what happened. Present, it's, it's an illness that's happening right now. OPQRST is a mnemonic. And you don't know what a mnemonic is. A mnemonic is a way, a, a breakthrough way, for you to learn different things in medicine easier. So you can recall them when you need them on a test or out in the field with a patient. Now, OPQRST is a mnemonic to remember the HPI, the what's wrong with the patient, the history of the present illness. Now. We start with O. O is for onset. So an example would be, you go to the patient, hey, what were you doing when this started? Maybe the patient was walking on the beach. Maybe the patient was sitting in a chair. Maybe the patient was out on a run. Maybe the patient was about to walk into an airport. What were they doing before this all started? What were they doing while this started? That's what you're going to look at. Now, provokes. Provokes is going to be anything that makes their symptom better or worse. So if they're having a hard time breathing, hey, does anything make your breathing better or worse? Now, if they're having abdominal pain or chest pain or leg pain, you're going to say, does anything make the pain better or worse? Does anything make your dizziness better or worse? See, all you're doing is inserting their symptom. They're going to say, I have this. Okay, then go through the go through it. What do you have? Is it chest pain, difficulty breathing, dizziness? What's going on, right? So let's go keep going from that. Provokes is your P. Provokes. Everyone messes this one up, but it's so simple. Anything make it better or worse. Q is quality. Can you describe how it feels? So what we're trying to understand here is we're not just and by the way. We're not just doing this randomly to get random information. Someone's having crushing chest pain, and they say it's crushing. You might think, oh, that might be, that might be more cardiac. Someone has sharp pain, ooh, a sharp pain. Right, that, could, that might be more a pulmonary issue, right? Think about pericarditis. Pericarditis actually presents as more of a sharp pain, but when you ask anything to make it better or worse, oh, well, when I lay down, it gets worse. When I get up, it's much better. See how OPQRSD can help you. Now the quality is like, describe how it feels. It could be a dull pain, sharp, crushing. You do not answer for them. You ask them, can you describe to me how it feels? They're gonna tell you. Now region. Region is gonna be, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt and where does it go? 
So it's, it's technically called region, but I like to use radiates um, because it's easier to remember the whole thing. Because you know where it is, they told you already, that's the region. But where is it her, you kind of already probably told you by now. Really, it's, does it go anywhere, does it radiate? So let's say I have pain in the middle of my, let's say in the, right, in the, right in the middle here of my, right on my stomach. Right over, let's say over your belly button, right? Does the pain go left or right, down or up? If I had pain in my, in my femur here, does the pain go down, does it go up into my hip, right? That would be stuff that you want to look at, okay? Now, severity. So from zero to 10, 10 being the worst pain of your life. Zero being right now you don't have any pain. One would be the most minor pain that you have. What is the pain right now? Okay, another question you could ask is, before we got here, if the patient improved, what was the pain when you first called and what is it now? Did it get better or worse? Okay, and you wanna do it a pain scale here. So the reason for the pain scale is, you can track the patient's pain throughout time. If the patient's pain is 10 when you meet them, they get in your care, it's seven. They get to the hospital, it's five, they're going the right direction. If the pain is eight when you meet them, nine in the ambulance, 10 in the hospital, they're going the wrong direction, okay? Now time, easiest question, and one of the first things you wanna look at is time. When did this whole thing start? And the biggest thing to remember, you're always gonna ask these, but the biggest thing is stroke patients. When was the last time they were seen normal, okay? That's a big one. So remember your time, don't forget time. When did this start? It's time, okay? So this is OPQRST. So I'm gonna go through OPQRST with you, one last, one, one summary, and what I would do, okay? Ready, set, here we go. Okay, Tacky, so what were you doing when this chest pain first started? Okay, you were outside? You were outside just going for a walk, okay? Now, the pain that you're having right now in the middle of your chest, does anything make that pain better or worse? Okay, so you're telling me when you walk, it gets hurt, it hurts more? Okay, and you're saying that when you sit, it's, it's better. Okay, okay, got it. So, can you describe how the pain feels in your own words, Tacky? Like, how does it feel? It feels, feels sharp, sharp pain, okay? A sharp pain, okay? So, Tacky, that pain that you're having in the middle of your, of your chest, right here, right? That pain, does it go anywhere? Does it go into your arm, your back, shoulders, front of your chest, back, or does it stay there? Where does it go? Hmm, okay. So you're saying that it kind of goes up to your shoulder, up to your right shoulder. It goes to your right shoulder, kind of around to the back. Okay, okay. So zero to 10 tacky, 10 would be the worst pain that you ever felt. Um, and zero would be, is no pain right now. Um, how bad is the pain right now? About eight, about eight? Okay, okay. Now when you were walking earlier, was the, was the pain still an eight? Or did it, was it more than eight? It felt like a nine or 10? Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then, Tacky, finally, when did this pain first start? It started about 30 minutes ago? Okay, okay. All right, Tacky, I'm gonna get a uh, little bit more information about you while we get your vitals set up, and we're gonna be doing an EKG on you, okay? All right, you're gonna be all right. And that's how you do it. Hey, everyone, so we're back. Hope you enjoyed that role play with our friend Tacky. Hope you're making another appearance, so stay tuned. We're gonna talk about past medical history. So in your brain, when you say past medical history, I want you to think sample. Past medical history equals sample. So now that we understand that with past medical history, let's talk about what sample is. S stands for signs and symptoms, okay? Now, I believe the real meat and potatoes here with, with sample is actually an ample from A to E. So I'm gonna break this down for you. So A is allergies. What is the patient allergic to? You gotta know that. What's happening with them right now may be due to an allergy, or you may wanna give them a medication. You gotta ask your sample before you give a medication. You gotta know what's going on, right? Now medication is what the patient takes if they are, are they on any medications, any prescription medications. But don't forget over-the-counter stuff too. Like what do you take? 
a lot of times patients who are chronic uh, disease patients will have a medication list and they'll just give it to you. Or they'll have it in their wallet. Now, there's other people that are healthy people that get into emergencies, not gonna have a med list. They might not be on any meds or you might not know. It's not always known, especially the patient unresponsive. You gotta use your clinical stuff there. Now P is we pass medical history. So what is the past medical history of the patient? What are they diagnosed with from a doctor? Okay, meaning asthma, heart disease, GERD, right? So many different things. Bipolar disorder, right? COPD, congestive heart failure. I'm just naming off diseases, but they diabetes, type one, type two, right? A few things. Maybe they have a thyroid disease or adrenal disease, sickle cell, right? So many different things. That's all here, okay? Last meal or oral intake. So what I mean is, when was the last time you ate or drank something, okay? And E is the events leading up to the emergency. So what that means is, basically, hey, what happened just before you called? What were you doing? And you're really looking for any changes. So like, did you do something crazy today that maybe you normally don't do? That's something that may come up. Or what happened when this all started? That's gonna be your events leading up. So what were you doing before this all happened? Maybe they were doing heavy lifting, now they have chest pain, right? Or abdominal pain. Oh, well, I didn't mention, I just got done lifting and heavy lifting. I haven't lifted in 20 years. Well, boom, all right? So that's your sample. So now I'm gonna uh, perform sample with our friend Tacky the Tiger. Let's do it. Okay, Tacky, so right now you said you're having some chest pain. Is anything else bothering you right now? Okay, just chest pain? Okay, no worries. So Tacky, do you have any allergies to medications or food, or anything like that? Any allergies that you know of? Okay, you're allergic to bees? Okay, okay, just bees, bee stings, okay, okay. Hey, uh, so what, med what medications do you take, Tacky? Any medications every day? Okay, so you're on metaprolol and lisinopril? Okay, what are you taking that for? High blood pressure? Now see how I transitioned? What are you taking that for? High blood pressure? Right? And you look, see how I know the medications? I look sharp. I'm not saying, well, what's that? Like, uh, and then, well, what the hell is this guy talking about? And this guy's know his meds? We know that, you know, when you take a pill of metaprolol and lisinopril, okay, or Norvask, amlodipine, most commonly for high blood pressure. Now, if Tacky was on Lantus, we would probably know he's probably a type 1 diabetic. Right? I don't want to assume, but I want to show that I'm sharp to the patient, right? And that's how I do it. And I did it in a nice way. It makes me know, hey, this guy knows, this guy or girl knows, knows their stuff, okay? Let's so go back into role play, three, two, one. Okay. So Tacky, we just talked about your uh, metaprolol and your Cinepro. Okay, gotcha, so those are high blood pressure medications, okay? Um, are you taking it for high blood pressure? You are? Okay, all right. Um, do you take any other meds over the counter or anything else? No? Just that? Okay, great. So, Tacky, with that being said, what kind of past medical history do you have? You have high blood pressure? Anything else? That's it? Okay, good, good, okay. And now, Tacky, when was the last time you ate and what time did you take your medications? You take them yet? Okay. You ate about 30 minutes ago? All right. And, and Tacky, um, what were you doing before this all started? Kind of walk me through your day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you went for the walk, you got back, and then it started. Okay. All right. We're going to take care of you here. We're going to get some vital signs on you. We're going to do an EKG for your chest pain that you're having. All right. Um, I am going to have you chew up some baby aspirin. Four baby aspirin. You're going to chew them up, okay? You're going to be fine. Okay? That's how you do it. Now... Now, I wanna thank you for being a subscriber and clicking that like button down below. But before you go, if you're one of these three people, I wanna let you know on a little secret. I put together a course, a program, that I spent hours putting together with you in mind. So if you're one of these three people, if you're preparing for school, if you're currently in school, or if you're preparing for your national registry, you gotta see us down the link in the description prepareforems.com, down in the description down below. Click that link, you'll see a video on there, it explains everything about the program. I'm giving you a lifetime access, plus the actual community group, where you can ask me questions directly in that group. 
So if you're one of those three people, click the link down below in the description. Everybody, I will see you next time. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the shout outs, the recommendations. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cap oh like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when I noticed it, it just, I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Olds obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have, an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing, two seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have, I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I, I would gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.